awakening mankind to new perspectives. Be great, be happy, you decide. What's up guys, hope you're doing amazing. Today for this video, I'm gonna be talking about something that's been on my mind, especially last night, it hit me. Many of you are going to agree with this and many of you aren't going to agree with this. This is probably gonna be very controversial. I'm actually curious in who does agree with this and who doesn't agree. And even with the, what I'm about to say has to do with the schooling system. And I'm curious to say what you think about how the schooling system is, how it's evolved over time, um, what its true purpose is, anything that it does correctly and things that it should change. And I'm gonna also list out some things that I think could improve in the schooling system and I'm curious to know what you think if this is, if it's basically, if you agree with it or if you don't agree with it. So without further ado, this is my problem and issue with the schooling system. When I say schooling system, I mean from the age that you start to actually, not like kindergarten and stuff, but like high school, college, and possibly even middle school in a way. First thing that I thought about was that, and this is all about my perspective on this, different for everyone, is that college in general, school in general, we're gonna focus on college though, is meant for certain careers and not others. That's what I believe. I believe that, for example, if you wanna become a doctor or a, or a nurse, it's probably a pretty good chance that you should go to school to learn about all the things that doctors need to know, all the things that nurses need to know and get certified so that you could actually become an own doctor, have your own practice or go work for a specific company. However, if you're looking to be like an entrepreneur, a business owner, someone like Elon Musk or just a small family private owned company, I don't think that you need the schooling system to be successful in that. I don't think you need. Now I'm gonna be very careful with what words I use in this video. Another thing is I don't think that the schooling system teaches the relevant information and knowledge that we need to know in our actual real life. And when I talk about real life, I mean, once you graduate, once you get done with high school, college, that's what I'm talking about when I say real life. When I say anything other than real life, I'm talking about school, college, high school, like all that type of stuff. So I feel like the schooling system doesn't teach you what you actually need to know in real life, how to make money, how to time manage your whole schedule, how to even create time when you have so many things bombarded at you. And I also, a lot of people talk about this, and I was thinking about this on my own. P people say that the information that we're getting, that kids, students are being taught um, in school is not relevant because by the time that we get out of school, technology has increased. New things are coming out. New positions are coming out. New jobs are coming out. Jobs are even being taken away. Robotics are happening. Technology is happening. So some of the things that we're being taught, how to use the technology that we're being taught to use, um, how to apply that. Sometimes when we get out of college, we're not even gonna be able to use that, which is a lot of what people say. And I'm starting to actually agree with that slowly. The next thing is the homework and the whole idea of going to a class and sitting in a freaking chair and learning. To me, it doesn't even make sense at all, to be honest with you. And what's even harder is that for me, I have trouble learning some things sometimes. Like I'm in specific classes right now, I have no idea what I'm learning, but I'm learning it to memorize it, to then go apply it to a test or a quiz or homework to get a good grade so that I could pass this class and pass college to get a piece of paper, which we'll talk about later. But in this process, this might be the same for other people, but I'm talking about myself again, like I just said before, is that I don't even know the equations that I'm being taught. I don't even know what the hell I'm being taught what it actually means, why it's going to be used, if it even will be used, and how to even use it. And for me, when I don't understand something, one of the things I do, I do two things. One of the things I do is just, ah, screw it, who cares, whatever. Ugh, ugh, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not gonna use it, nah, I'm not gonna need it. Ugh, screw that. Everyone else doesn't know how to use it, whether they're in school or outside in the real world, right? Or the second thing I do is I actually try and learn it, but I feel like that's taking a bet on myself. And I'm being real with you guys right here, like expressing my feelings and what I think. Like what goes through my head is if I put all this energy into learning this equation or this thing, this thing that they're teaching me, and I have no need for it once i get into the real world real life i just wasted precious time precious energy on learning that shit when i'm never gonna freaking use it 
ever. That's one of the things that really, really aggravates me. And another thing is the way that kids, the way that students are being taught by these teachers, by certain teachers, majority of them, to me is absolutely ridiculous. You're taught to go into school. And I know a lot of people say this, but I, didn't, I I'm starting to go from saying whatever what everyone else says to taking it in and really diagnosing it in myself seeing what I think so when I go into class basically sit down at a desk right take your laptop take your notebook out and you listen to the professor talk to you teach you something and then they ask you a question and majority of the time 90% of the class is gonna be like this um, and yeah you have that one person that goes hey I know what the answer is and they say it and the teacher either goes very good yes or uh close good try like the way that i've learned is most effective for me and everyone should learn this for themselves how to learn for themselves how to take in information is i need to see it and i need to physically move my body and interact and talk and get loud and immerse myself in it to actually learn it not sit at a freaking table like this taking notes saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know the answer to one it's three the answer to two is 26 how'd you get that uh, I have no fucking clue um, I use a uh, technology on the internet that uh, helped me that actually showed me how to do it and uh, gave me the answer that's how yeah not for everything but for some things so what I'm saying is like these teachers, some of the teachers haven't even gone out into the actual workforce and practice what they're preaching, practice what they're teaching. And a lot of the time, these professors, these teachers aren't giving real life examples and aren't saying, hey, guys, we're going to make this class very interactive. You're going to be talking. I'm going to be talking. We're going to make this fun. We're not going to make this boring. Maybe even put on some music and we're going to get into this and we're going to fucking learn shit. Excuse my cursing. I got to work on that. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into this and we're gonna really really learn and you get the kids excited and all this stuff about attendance and grades yes i get it if you're going to work at a job you need to be on time you need to show up there at the correct times and leave at the correct times and do the work that you're assigned to the best of your ability but make an environment where kids actually want to go and learn and look forward to it and have a good time and laugh with you joke have fun i feel like that is such a huge issue because so much of the information sometimes can get extremely extremely boring and when it gets boring kids fall asleep and when kids fall asleep they lose attention and when kids lose attention they don't understand what material is being placed on hand for them whether it's actually good information or bad information and they don't learn it and then they don't apply it in their own life also whether this is teachers or the actual school system if you look at it you have x amount of months x amount of weeks right that you go and you learn each course each class right you have a specific you have two classes every single week or three classes every single week right and you go in and you go in and you go in and it's like it could be 45 minutes to an hour and 40 minutes or two hour lectures or whatever i think to be able to learn this stuff and i'm open to your opinions on this we should be immersed like fully immersed not a span of like six months condense that into like a month or two months and go all in on this one subject, on this one class. Get interactive, get moving, share the ideas, and practice them. Take trips, see how they actually, see in the real life, how they're actually working out, not just in the classroom. But condense everything and immerse yourself in what you're learning, what you're teaching. Immerse yourself. Don't have it like click, 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 click. Combine everything and just go full out. Also, I th this is gonna, this might be very controversial, okay. Let me know what you guys think on this one about cheating and helping getting help on tests quizzes homework so many times we're told don't cheat you cannot have any help you cannot have any resources when you're going for this test when you're going for this quiz when you're doing this work you have to know you have to memorize you have to have everything down right and you wonder why kids hate taking this shit, hate doing taking these assignments these quizzes these these tests these exams or personally at least for me and you say no cheating no helping so i might be wrong about this but let me get this straight i can't have any help any resources to help me with this equation with this problem that's probably not even real example of real life but the minute that i graduate and go into the work workforce or start my own company become a doctor a nurse whatever and i have a question about something i don't know how to do something you're telling me 
that I'm not going to be able to turn to my right or my left or give someone up a call and say, hey, I need help with this. I don't know how to do it. Instead, oh, I learned not to ask for help, not to do this, not to do that. Let me try and figure it all out all on my own and waste all my time on this shit. This is so something like huge for me. So instead of saying you need to get good grades, bad grades are bad, bad grades, don't get them. Don't get low grades and don't cheat. That's against what we're about. How about when we take a quiz and a, a test, an assignment, something, a project, we have a little note card. We have a little thing that can help us out a little. I guess there's gonna be a fine line between writing everything on it versus not. So you can memorize it. I guess that's the argument is that maybe you can memorize it. You should memorize it. You should know how to do it quickly. What happens if like you don't understand something? When you really go out, this is from my experience in the real world, if I don't know how to do something, Hey, Jim, I, uh, I need some help real quick. Do you, do you know how to do this? Absolutely. Send it right over. I got you. Awesome. Here you go. Teach me how to do it. I just learned it and he helped me do it. Like this is what I really don't understand that much. And writing it down also, in my experience, helps you remember it. And again, I guess the argument can be, we want you to memorize it so you actually know it and you don't have to cheat and look it up. I, I mean, I don't know. And also with the grades and the penalties, I kind of talked about this before. Why penalize students for getting bad, 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 bad grades to the point where they hate taking these tests, these quizzes, they hate going to school because some people might suck. And now it's competition and all you're thinking about is, oh my God, I have a test. I got to study. I got to study. I got to study. I got to do a really, really good on this project, on this test, on this, on this quiz, on, on whatever. And you stress about it all the time. And next thing you know, you start getting anxiety. You got start getting depressed because you got a bad grade. Oh, your average is low. Now you're getting yelled at by a teacher or whatever. Your GPA is dropping. Oh my God. <gasps> Stop the fucking bullshit, honestly. This is where I give out some of my solutions that I wrote down last night. First solution is to incorporate real life. And what the hell do I mean by that? Well, great question. An example is having activities and trips to see and be in the nitty gritty. So instead of talking about something for statistics or talking about something for English writing or mathematics, entrepreneurship, sales, you, you name it, anything, science, biology, archeology, span graphic design, marketing. Instead of talking about this stuff, why don't you make activities like we're actually creating something that we're gonna use and let us use it or take trips to facilities, to companies, to talk with people who are in the position that we want to be in. Let's take a trip. Let's actually go and experience and be in the environment. See what see what it's all about. See the pressure that, oh my God, this is due here. This is due at this due date. And we have to have this done for this client because this is how important it is. And oh my God, wait, they're working as a group. They're working as a team. Oh my God, they could ask each other questions. This is freaking amazing. They could go back to the head chief, give them their report have a system, have a structure that they're going through. This is the culture, this is the environment, this is the energy. I absolutely love this. Now I know why we have what we're learning. Now I know why we're learning what we're learning, what this equation is used for, what these numbers mean, why we have to do this when this happens. Take us into it. This is the same thing as saying, when people say you go to school and you learn a language, next thing you know, a year, two years later, you don't remember anything. That's because you were taking small classes versus if you went to trying to learn Italian, you went to Italy, you're trying to learn Spanish, you went to Spain, French, trying to learn French, went to Paris, France. You immerse yourself in it. You become part of that culture and you only learn by doing and you keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on going and you make mistakes that you're pushed to make mistakes so that you can learn why you made those mistakes and how to correct it. Okay. The next one is teach us relevant real life shit to help us when we get out. And I think this is a huge topic of conversation is that a lot of people who will go to, and I'm not saying college is a bad thing, but I'm just saying people who go to college are very fortunate. If your parents are paying for your college education, you're very, very fortunate. Take advantage of that. But for people who don't have their parents or their grandparents or aunts and uncles or someone helping out, a friend helping out, pay it. A lot of people, and I even know some friends are going to college and they're getting in to stupid amounts of student debt, right? That we're learning information to then go out and get a job to then create income, have income to then 
pay out, pay back to reduce or eliminate this student debt. So now when you get out, you're going to work, right? Or you're creating your own thing and you're working, working, working. I need money, I need money, I need money. We need money, money, money. Here you go, debt, debt, debt. And now your mind's on shit. I gotta pay this debt, debt, debt. My thing is, and this is a huge topic in life if you like go on YouTube or just type it up. I don't understand why people are, I'm not blaming this on people, but I'm just saying, I don't get why the education system to me seems like if you're paying yourself, you go to college, it's an option, you go to college and you pay to get into debt, to be stressed out to pay it back with the skills that you hopefully acquired during that time that you go to your job and use. And hopefully you do find a job and hopefully you don't get laid off. I think it's very interesting. That's the word I'm gonna use, very, very interesting. And last but not least, to all society, to everyone out there that's watching this, and to you parents that are watching me right now, and to you school systems that are watching me right now, I'm gonna say some things that you might agree with and you might not agree with. Either way, this is what I feel inside, and everyone has a different opinion. Not saying that mine's right, not saying that mine's wrong. Things can be different for you, and I totally respect that. But this is for me. Stop forcing and saying that every, stop forcing people to go to college and saying that everyone needs to go to college. Personally, there are some people in this world that I don't think need to go to college. I don't think there are certain people that are even fit to go to college or that college is for them. I know people, my friends, some people that have actually dropped out of college to go start working for a company that they're creating themselves or for another company that they're working for someone else and they skip the whole college thing or they even dropped out of college and then doing absolutely amazing. They're doing freaking phenomenal. So. This might be ingrained in you school systems, you societies, you parents. When you were growing up, you need to go to college. You need to go to college. Times are changing as everyone sees. And I think that it's only right for each person to make their own decision with society and with their family back in their decision, whatever that is. Not saying you're required to go here and do this. Maybe have some assistance. This is what I think college is for. This is why I think you should go. This is why I think maybe you should explore different routes. But whatever you choose, we're behind you 150%. But this is what we think could be beneficial for you. That, oh my God, that would be absolutely amazing. The next thing is, what the hell does a diploma prove? Does it prove that like you can do work, you can cheat to get good grades, you can learn, you can drink, you can party at college? There is, to most people, a significance with a piece of paper, a diploma, right? I graduated, let's freaking go. And to other people, this paper, this the, this certificate I graduated might not have as much significance. This is the same thing as I said in one of my videos of words only have power when you assign meaning to them. When you take away the meaning of it, it has no power. When you take away the meaning of this paper that you get for graduating, when you take away that meaning, that power, it has no power. You take away that meaning, it has no power, which is interesting to me. And then also, what does it determine? Does it determine how smart and credible you are, how likely you are to get a job and how good you will be at it? I think it's very important to define and put meaning onto what things, objects, experiences, what they mean and why we're, why we're working toward them or why we're doing them. And then again, college is not meant for everyone, I think, personally. School systems are not meant for everyone. And this is a huge topic of debate that I've been recently watching and, and hearing. And I think a lot of people are closed-minded and they're not open to hearing that point of view, hearing that perspective and being open to it and saying, hey, what's your side of this argument? What's your side of this of this debate? What are you thinking and why do you think that? Instead, it's closed off. This is what I've learned. This is what I've been through. This is true and this is right. Whatever you are thinking isn't. And I think that is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's what I think. I uh, hopefully I didn't just blow your ears out with that. And last but not least, wake up everyone as you're watching this because I'm about to blow your freaking brains. That sounded like a threat. That was not a threat. Uh, disclaimer, that was not a threat. By no means am I targeting you at all. Um, I love you. Different generations have different technologies that they use have a different way of a lifestyle, have a different way of getting a job, making money, providing for their family, providing for their experiences, right? Different lifestyles. And what I've been seeing, what I've been noticing is in this day and age, you don't need to just have a job, work at a company to make money, right? 
nowadays. There's TikTok, there's YouTube, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. You name it, there are all these different types of social media technologies out there and people are making money on them. I mean, you see one kid go absolutely famous, viral overnight. Next thing you know, they have millions of followers and they're creating brand. Brands are reaching out to them, paying them money to show off their product, making them a brand ambassador, giving them a code. Now they're making millions of dollars off of TikTok or Instagram or even YouTube. It's getting these insane amounts of views and subscribers from people. Next thing you know, I just made $15 million this year off of YouTube. What? Huh? I started TikTok in like, whether it was three months, a year, five years, now I'm making like $20 million with all my followers, viewers, uh, brands that are reaching out to me, getting flown out to different locations to do photo shoots and all this stuff. You're making how much on an app from, from tick? What? Are you, what? Same with Instagram, Instagram models. You're posting amazing pictures. You're posting amazing content. You're building your brand on these platforms. And you're, because of that, you're attracting more people. You're bringing in sales. You're bringing in different types of brands that like what you're talking about, that like the content that you have, right? This is the same with stocks and crypto. NFTs, I mean, everything. You make an NFT, next thing you know, you sell it for a million dollars or you make a collection and you keep on selling it. And next thing you know, you hit $20 million in the span of less than a year. And people go, you made, you made $20 million off of an, what the hell is an NFT? Like people might not understand what it is or the significance of it. So I feel like that's why it's so important to sit down, do some research, learn. What is TikTok? What are people doing on it? What is Instagram and YouTube? What are people doing it on it and why? How are they making this money? Crypto, stocks, NFTs. What, in the, what is an NFT? What is this picture? It looks like just a picture, like a stupid thing, but there's actually value behind it that you don't know yet. And I feel like so many people are closed-minded into the different ways of making money and generating um, your own lifestyle and your own income. I feel like you need to get it through your, you need to get this through your tough, thick skull. But at the same time, you also need to get beat up in the process of doing all this social media stuff, NFTs, crypto, TikTok, Instagram, that I've heard the argument that if you just become famous overnight and you get insane amounts of money without going through the rough, hard shit, getting knocked down, getting punched, getting beaten down, getting back up and then getting beaten down again and getting back up, developing that strength inside your mind, your mindset, having a bulletproof mindset and keep on going and knowing how hard it actually takes. I feel like you also need to go through that even if you're gonna be making, blowing up on all these different technologies. But if you're one of the people who is knocking, saying all this stuff's bullshit, right? And this is crazy. I don't get why people are doing it. This is doesn't make sense. Are you serious? I'm gonna push you to stop doing that. I'm gonna push you to have an open perspective on this new technology, on this new world, on where society's going, whether you think it's amazing, or whether you think it's the worst thing in the world, but have an open perspective. Be open to hearing different people's point of views and don't be negative with this. Instead, hey, let me think how world's changing, technology's changing, society's changing, things are evolving, things are maybe about to hit a revolution. How can I take this and make it for the better in my life? How can I take this and use it for myself to maybe start working smarter and more efficiently and more effectively than busting my ass every single time and not getting the results that other people are getting. Hey, this person's doing exactly what I wanna do and they have the success that I wanna achieve. So instead of me going through the, the downfalls and the, and the trips and the journey and the long tough shit, what do they do? What are their mistakes that I can learn from and learn from it? And take it so that is my rant about the school system how it can improve what i think is wrong with it and the technology and society that is changing i hope you guys like that if you did and if you thought this was interesting there's more videos on inspiration and videos on opening up your perspective to new things go check out go subscribe go follow at all of our social media accounts and go check out some of the videos hope you like them but as always guys be great, be happy, because only you decide what your perspective is. I'll see ya.